Greetings, fellow Star Wars fans. I am... Okay, this isn't gonna work. This is freaking ridiculous. I can barely hear myself. I can't breathe. Fuck this. Hey, somebody help me get the duct tape off, will ya? Let's start this again. All right, I am not above exploiting Star Wars mania for personal gain in the shape of views. So here's a little five question quiz that will truly challenge your mastery of the force. Questions first, answers at the end. How you do, we will see. I've got a bad feeling about this. Question number one. In the first script, Rampire Strikes Back, Yoda is called Adoba, Yonan, Minch, or Buffy. Number two, true or false? George Lucas had planned out all three trilogies in advance before the original Star Wars was filmed. Number three, the name given to the type of music being played in the cantina scene is A. Klezmar, B. Palfin, C. Splooge, or D. Jizz. Number four, back to Yoda, because everybody loves Yoda. The original plan was for Yoda to be played by A. Warwick Davis, who later played the Ewok Wicket and starred in Lucas's fantasy film Willow. B. A regular size actor made smaller using special effects, as was eventually done in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. C. A child actor, but by law, kids are only allowed to work a limited number of hours per day, and the makeup itself would have taken longer than that. Or D. A monkey dressed in a costume and trained to use a cane. 5. True or false? Some of the alien languages in Star Wars are actually real, pre-existing Earth languages. All right, ready? You got your answers? Did you pause this and go on the internet and search things through Wikipedia? If so, get the hell out of here. Okay, here we go. Question number one. In the first script, Rampire Strikes Back, Yoda is called Adoba, Yonan, Minch, or Buffy. The answer is C. In the original screenplay, writer Lee Brackett had the Yoda character named Minch. Maybe because he's a little mensch. Though mensch is a little too close to a popular 70s word for vagina. But extra credit if you recognize that George Lucas's original idea was to have Yoda named Buffy. No, seriously, he wanted to call Yoda Buffy. Early signs of the thinking that led to Jar Jar Binks. Number two, true or false? George Lucas had planned out all three trilogies in advance before the original Star Wars was filmed. False. Look, this is the myth created around George Lucas, that he was this genius who had mapped out the entire Star Wars nine-part story before filming a single frame. Lucasfilm has continued to promote this BS, but here's a couple of holes in that tale. Do you really think that Lucas knew Luke and Leia were gonna be twins when he had them share a passionate kiss twice and set up a love triangle plot with Han Solo? This was in the 70s, long before TLC existed to give them a reality show. The original script for Empire Strikes Back alludes to a sister for Luke, but doesn't name Leia, and had initially been named Nellith, a different character. Vader was not originally Luke's father. Luke's father, Anakin, was going to appear to Luke as a spirit guide while on Dagobah, someone distinct from Vader, which makes sense when you consider that, as comedy writer Michael Shore pointed out, Obi-Wan wanted to hide Luke and Leia from Vader by splitting them up and putting them on different worlds but leaving Luke with the last name Skywalker. Sounds like a bad Polish joke. Number three. The name given to the type of music being played in the cantina scene is A. Klezmar, B. Palfin, C. Splooge, or D. Jizz. Unbelievably, the answer is D. Jizz. I don't know who decided this or if they knew what they were doing. I suppose it's a play on jazz, using the sci-fi music tradition of replacing the vowel with an I, in the way that science fiction folk music is called filk music. But filk music is ear cancer, and the cantina music is kind of all right. But seriously, jizz? Can you imagine a radio station playing smooth jizz? Asking a potential date if she's into jizz? And when you mix jizz, as jazz does, with scat singing, well, jizz and scat is a website, and the band won't be getting any bookings at weddings and bar mitzvahs. Number four, the original plan was for Yoda to be played by A, Warwick Davis, B, a regular size actor made smaller using special effects, C, a child actor, or D, a monkey dressed in a costume and trained to use a cane. While the other three seem like far more sensible considerations, the answer is D, a monkey dressed in a costume and trained to use a cane to walk. What is that mask? It looks like Richard Nixon. Can you imagine that becoming a beloved character worldwide? 
The only thing that had going for it was, considering the way Dagobah looks, the monkey throwing shit when angry would only enhance the scenery. The idea was jettisoned when the production crew made it clear that filming would take forever because the monkey kept pulling off the mask. Though it's hard to believe that the idea even got to the stage of putting the monkey in the mask. This is one of those ideas that you can't believe ever made it through a series of people without being stopped. This and every Adam Sandler movie since Happy Gilmore. Here's the monkey himself in a paparazzi shot. Reminder that Empire was made during the cusp of the 70s. Check out the hot pants. Whoa. By the way, another sci-fi epic did use a monkey. The original Battlestar Galactica had the robot Daggett Muffet played by a monkey in a suit. If this were done today, they'd have more to worry about from PETA than Cylons. And finally, number five, true or false? Some of the alien languages in Star Wars are actually real, pre-existing Earth languages. True! The language used by the little Jawas is based on a version of African Zulu language sped up real fast. And Greedo speaks a language called Quechua, which is still used by small groups of indigenous people in Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, and Colombia. So only select South American native peoples know for sure who shot first. Sadly, the language used by the Ewoks is still just called Nub Nub. So how did you do? It's just us here, you can be honest. If you scored all five, you're a Jedi master. Four out of five, impressive, but you are not a Jedi yet. Three out of five, pad one. And two are under correct, congratulations, you probably have a social life. Well, I hope you learned a few things you can use to earn nerd cred with your pals while waiting in line to see episode seven for the 12th time. There's more of these I can drop if you all like this one, so watch this and share it. Sharing leads to the good side of the force, not the dark side. Wait a second, what the hell is the good side of the force called? The dark side is called the dark side, but the good side is just called, what, the force? That doesn't make any sense. Night isn't called the dark side of day. Screw you, George Lucas. You got time to think up midichlorians, but no answer for this? Somebody get on this, will you? It's bugging me now.